guess I should put this on. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Shannon with Pick and Boost Vintage. And here today to do a little project with the new Recycled Treasure papers that we just got in. Last week um, when they arrived, I did unveiling and showed all the different new prints. And I'm um, going to show a project today on um, a cute little thing and so easy. But before we get started, I want to show you the results. If you didn't see it online, here is what we made or I made last week with the uh, Harper mold from IOD. Put these on. See how cute that came out? Very easy and fun to do. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was using the uh, Roy Cycle Treasure decoupage paper. And I don't know if you saw it or not, but this is what I made. This is just the old um, popcorn tin that you get at Christmas time. And you don't know really what to do with it. You know it could be reused. Well, I just made it into, it's one of the bigger ones. And now it's a garbage can here at Chuck. So, all right. So today, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the paper that we're going to use. Here is the paper. I chose this one. It's got four different panels on here. And... We're going to use that. Real quick, though, I want to show you. Let me split my screen. And, oops, wrong one. This one. Okay. So here's my project. Oops, switch it up. Uh, this is just an old cabinet door that I had laying around. It was very uh, shiny and slick. So I went ahead and I used the Dixie Bell Slick Stick. If you put that on anything that's shiny or slick let it dry for 24 hours then you can put whatever you want on it and it won't come off that is for slick surfaces normally you don't have to do that but okay so we're going to make a cool project with this door uh, what i'm going to use first is i'm going to just go ahead and paint it in the midnight sky by dixie bell all right I'm using my flat brush and I'm just going to give it a nice even coat. Now the decoupage papers are really easy to use and there are several different methods of putting it on. You can use clear coat, Mod Podge, I've put it on just when I've been painting. I put it right on with my wet paint. And there's a technique called the iron on method, which is pretty cool if you think about it. You paint your surface, put your decoupage paper on it, and then just use a regular everyday old iron and heat it up with no steam, just, just the iron. And what it does is it reactivates the paint that you applied first and it causes the paper to stick. I'm not doing that method today, but I just thought I'd tell you really quick about it. If you didn't already know about it, there are several videos out there on that. So you can Google that or YouTube that or whatever you want to do, if you're interested that is. But I'm going to do just the regular old um, clear coat method. So I have given my cabinet door just one coat of the Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint. And if you're wondering what color this is, this is the midnight sky. Okay, I'm just making sure it's nice and even and no puddles. So it can dry a little bit faster because I probably will have to be um, drying this before I can put the paper on because I want to show you how to do this with the clear coat method. Okay, so here are my papers, the designs on the paper. I'm going to use this one here. It says 
be the change you want to see in the world. So I want to use this one here. So I'm simply just going to cut it out. And that is what is so nice about these papers. You can cut out whatever section or part that you want. Some of the new designs have mermaids or um, jellyfish and you can cut out part of it or all of it or whatever you want to do and you can rearrange them. Okay, so I'll set this to the side. And now I just simply have my cool paper. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry the section where I'm going to be putting the decoupage paper. Now these papers are by Roy Cycle Treasures. And coincidentally, she's having a marathon that started last night. It runs till February 14th. Each night, there'll be three different artists coming on her Facebook page and doing a decoupage project. I am lucky enough uh, to be going on her page too. I'll be on February 11th, which is Thursday night. I'll be on at 6 p.m. Eastern time. The advertisement says 5 o'clock Central time. I'm glad I noticed that or I am <laughs> going on at the wrong time. All right. Now, I could have put on, I could put on two coats, but I'm going to lightly distress this. So I don't need to put on that much paint, especially if I'm going to be distressing it and taking it off. Okay, we are almost dry. You can still see right here when it's a little bit wet. I should probably dry this real quick too or my arms will be covered with paint. Not that there's really any difference because I'm generally always covered in paint. All right. So you can use a blow dryer. You can use a heat gun to dry your paint. Normally what I do if I need to rush it or get my paint to be dried a little faster, I just stick it outside in the sun because I'm down here in Southwest Florida and the sun gets really hot. All right. So for this, hey Rice, <laughs> I'm going to um, be using the Dixie Bell clear coat. I can apply this with a sponge brush. I can apply it with a regular paintbrush. I want to use though whatever's going to give me the smoother application. Okay. Now this is not big enough to fit the ins entire center of this. But I'm also, I have this hook here that I'm gonna attach. So that'll be added later. So I'm going to set it, put it just a little bit up top. And I'm going to just use sponge brush. And I'm going to try to apply as even a coat as possible. If it's not that even, that is where you can get wrinkles. You also want to make sure that you are applying enough where it'll grip the paper and stick it to the paint. If I was working on a bigger piece of paper, I would probably do it in sections put the paper down, put a little bit more decoupage, then move the paper just to try to keep it as smooth as possible. But this is not a really big piece. Okay, I'm just giving it even once over. And it's okay if I'm outside the border of my paper because when I'm all done, I'm going to give the whole entire thing a coat, a clear coat anyway for protectant. Okay, I need a rag. 
Okay, so now I have that on here. Let's put this on. And I'm just lightly taking my fingers and running it over the paper. There we go. You want to make sure that you really get the edges because you want the edges to stay down. Yeah. Now, some people use uh, saran wrap. Um, whoops, sorry. Saran wrap because it helps squish out the wrinkles. Um, I don't have saran wrap here at the shop, and I forgot to bring some today. So I just have one of those plastic liners that you put in your little garbage cans, and I'm going to use that instead. So I'm just applying pressure, and I'm pushing down, making sure that I'm getting out some of those wrinkles. The, the reasoning behind this is because it is softer and it won't tear your paper. Ta-da! Let's see if you can see it. Is that better like that? There we go. So look how cute that is. I love it. Now, what I don't like is look at the edge. You can see the square edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And I'm just going to use my paint to do that. bring this back. See if I can get it centered for y'all. There we go. All right. So I'm going to just quickly dry a little bit of the glue. That's where or the, the clear coat that's around the edge. And I can see that this little corner wants to come up. So I'm going to add some more clear coat. So I'm just going to go ahead and just Go ahead and take the clear coat and run it over my entire edge because I want to make sure that I have every bit of this edge down. I don't want it coming up at all. There we are. Okay, so let me go ahead and dry that. And if you're using a heat gun, be very careful. <laughs> the tip gets pretty hot and does hurt when it touches your skin. <laughs> Even leaves a scar. So I'm so excited for Thursday night. I'm supposed to talk for like an hour. So that's going to be uh, fun. <laughs> I'm normally in and out really quick. But the project that I suggested or uh, that I'm doing is going to be, it's going to take me a while. So it's going to be fun. Okay, so now I'm going back with my... Um, my uh, midnight sky and I'm just going to do a little bit around the edge and sporadically put it so it looks like it's coming through the black rather than just a, something that was glued to this door. Let it come in a little, out a little, and I'm just pounding, going up and down. Trying to distinguish, or not distinguish, disguise the edge a little bit. Now I'm just taking a rag and pushing some of that down. I, it's kind of bouncy only because I have it on a Lazy Susan just so I could show you. Okay, so that's okay. That's gonna drive me crazy. So I'm gonna take the lazy Susan down <laughs> and just put it down here, so you can all see. That way, it doesn't bounce around. Center this just a little bit better. There we go. 
again, I'm just using some Midnight Sky and I'm just going around the edge because I'm trying to disguise the edge. Don't want you to see where the paper starts and ends. And it's okay to come in a little bit too. Give it some shadow. Oh yeah, there we go. Take my rag. Blend it just a little bit. There we go. I'm trying to see how it looks on camera. It always looks better in person. <laughs> If you have too much paint, you can just take your rag and just and like I said, there's no rhyme or reason. I'm just adding and pouncing here and there because I want it to look like it is coming through the paint as opposed to just sat on here. <laughs> but you still want to be able to read it, especially this part here where it says, be the change in the world you want to see. Okay. So I'm just going to dab. This will help dry it a little bit and smush it in. Okay, I can still see this line here, so I want to Soften that up a little bit. All right. Let's see. I need to pick it up real quick so I can take it. All right. Alright, so here we go. Now, when this dries, I'm going to go ahead and put on a la um, another layer of the clear coat. But before we do that, I'm going to lightly distress the edges. And because the cabinet door was a lighter color, that's why I chose to use this one because I knew I was going to go with the dark. So when I do the dark, the light will come through. It's still a little bit wet, so I'm sure I could wet distress it. Um, but I'm going to just go ahead and use my sandpaper. And I'm just going to lightly do the edges. I hope that is showing well on the camera. Oops. It adds just another element to this. And if I wanted to, I could actually take a little bit more off here. Whenever you're distressing, I always recommend a circle to give it more natural look. Maybe a little bit right here, the edge. And your distressing does not have to be even on each side. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. Okay, so there we go. Now we're going to add one more element to this just for fun. I'm going to be adding a hook here and I've already pre-drilled my holes because it makes life more a lot easier if you have your holes pre-drilled. And then I'm going to put this on here. Can you see that? So it now becomes a piece that is useful, not just a piece of art, but I'm going to put hooks on the back and I can hang it on the wall and I can be reminded every day that I need to be the change in the world. I can hang my keys on here. I can hang a light jacket on here. I can hang whatever I want. And if I feel like this color is not the best color, I can take my black gilding wax. Let me see. I should have it handy. Oh, I do. Yay. Um, 
my black gilding wax, my Dixie Bell, of course. And I can take my finger and I can just run it on here and add some black to it. And if I don't feel like my finger is giving it enough, I can go back with my brush. But I think I like the black because it's going to tie it in better to the cabinet door. Okay, so I'm going to be putting this on, but I need to clear coat it first. So let me just check and make sure that the paint is pretty dry. I have a few areas where it's pulling up. So I'm just going to dry it real quick. <laughs> and then we'll clear coat it. We'll hang the hook on it and we'll show you the final project. Hey, Jessica. Okay, just a few places here. All right, let's get some clear coat on here. If this is a project you think a friend might like, tag them or share that with them. That'd be great. You'll notice, you can see the difference of the clear coat. Um, I always upload all of my videos to YouTube, on my YouTube channel. So if you ever miss one and you can't find it on my Facebook page, you can always go right to the YouTube channel. And they are there. This little project is getting me very excited for Thursday night. Wait till you see what I do. I hope it turns out. You know, sometimes you get very excited for a project. You think it's going to be perfect. And then, <laughs> not so much. Well, I'm hoping that this is not the case for this one. <laughs> okay. So I'm putting the clear coat over the top. This will make sure that that paper is staying on. It's got a coat under it and a coat on top. Okay. One thing about clear coat is if you miss, <laughs> you miss the section, you'll be able to see it because when it dries, it won't look like the rest, but I can always go back and add. Let's give it a once over. I do have wrinkles, but I love it because it looks like it's supposed to be like that. Okay, put that to the side. Here's my hook, Got my screws. Let's put this on. Make sure they line up. I'm hoping it's straight because those that know me know that I did not measure <laughs> my little readers on so I can see. Oops. Well, there you go. I, I drilled the holes too fat, but guess what? I'm prepared. I have fat screws. So let me put the skinny screws aside. Roll over here. And where did I put those? There they are. I wanted to try the other screws because they were gold and they blended better. These are silver, they'll stick out, but I can just paint those. So. Here we go. This one. Okay. And I'm going to brush on some more gilding wax because I like the black. My scissors. You see that? Okay, let me show you. There we go. If you haven't tried the gilding wax by Dixie Bell yet, stop into your nearest retailer or stop in and see me, and I will show you these. These are the 
these just add so much to your project, no matter what you're working on. So much dimension, layers. And they're so versatile because you can put them on with your finger, with a brush. And they just add a lot of depth. See that? Woo! Okay. <laughs> I'm a mess. All right, so let me show you this. Even though it's not 100% dry, I just want to kind of show you. Let me go back to my full screen here. So now I can take this and I'm going to hang this on the wall. And it's can hang keys, can hang whatever. And it will remind, be the change you want to see in the world. Actually, I'm not going to keep this. This will be for sale in the shop here. But if you want to stop in and see it, please do. Uh, I appreciate you joining me today. And for those of you that are interested in decoupage, make sure you check out the um, decoupage marathon on Royce Cycle Treasures page, her Facebook page. It ran, started last night. It goes all the way till Sunday. I will be on there Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central. All right, you guys have a fantastic day and thank you for joining me.